As a result of contentment, one gains extreme joy. Well, I want me some of that. We're going for the second Niyama Samtosha. So you've been to a few or maybe many yoga classes and you are hooked. Somehow you feel better, kinder, more connected to yourself and those around you. Your friends view you as a hippie now and your parents, well, they think it's a phase. Regardless, when you are on your mat, you are home. Yoga teachers and students, come learn how yoga can help you navigate the daily grind, breakups, your anxiety from a place of clarity and compassion. Welcome to the Modern Yogi Podcast, hosted by me, Laura Siljander. Misfits, earthlings, yogis, take a deep breath, check in to see how you're doing, body, mind, and soul, because you have arrived. All right. Hi. Welcome back, my modern yogis. It's been a little bit. I took a little break. My wife and I hopped into our little car and headed out west to Colorado and my beloved Moab, Utah. And can I just tell you something? I surf, I run, I bike, I hike, and there is one brand, and I'm not sponsored by them, but I want to shout out. There's one brand that always comes with me no matter what adventure I'm going on. I could be in the jungles of Costa Rica with a bunch of students. I could be just surfing at my local beach, or I could be like tearing it up in Moab on my mountain bike. And I always seem to have Prana on. Prana, like energy, but it's a brand. What I like about them is one, they actually pay their people fairly. Two, their stuff lasts. Three, it's made out of really good material. And four, I don't know if there's anyone else out there that needs to know this, but I'm from a family of redheads and freckles, and I was diagnosed with melanoma at age 22. So I was a youngin. Since then, I have had so many procedures. So much skin cancer stuff, it's not even funny. But Prana has a sun line, a sun line, and they have SPF built into pants, shorts, shirts, bathing suits, sun shirts. And this stuff is meant to be in the water, sweat on. Like I said, sweaty in the jungle, trekking through stuff. Their stuff lasts. So just a shout out to Prana. If you want to check them out, prana.com. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just wondering if there's anyone else out there who tries to take care of their skin but still is obsessed with being outside. I don't want to let my diagnosis rule my life and make it so I can't be outside ever, but I do take the precautions of wearing sun clothes. Just a, just a thought. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> We are in the middle of Patanjali's Eight Limbs of Yoga. So Patanjali, a guy or a group, wrote the Yoga Sutras. Well, Yoga Sutras are a ton of lessons, below 200 lessons, that what birthed out the Eight Limbs of Yoga. We already went through the Yamas, the first limb, and now we are in the Niyamas. The yamas, those were more things that we should probably refrain from so we can live this yogic lifestyle. The second limb of yoga, the niyamas, is how we can treat and nourish ourselves, how to take care of ourselves. And last episode, we went over saucha, which is cleanliness and purity of your mind, your body, and your environment. The second niyama is something called samtosha, sam. Tosha. I've also seen it with an N, so San Tosha, which translates roughly to contentment. Contentment. <laughs> Big swallow. Okay, let's just get something straight here. <laughs> contentment does not mean just settling for less. You know the country song? I ain't settling, just getting by. not that we're not just getting by but samtosha is really your baseline your baseline of worthiness for yourself so think about this you think about a straight line it's just a nice straight horizontal line and then you've got peaks and you've got valleys so you've got a squiggle line that goes up and then down and then up and then down and you've got this straight baseline that goes in the middle 
that is your Samtosha, that baseline. So let's say one of your peaks is that like, oh, I met someone. I fell in love. We are in love. We are in the honeymoon stage. That's a peak. You are stoked. You are looking past all of the bullshit in life because life is peachy because you're in love. And then you broke up down, 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 your valley, you're way down the valley, you're upset, either eating too much or not eating at all, you don't trust yourself, you don't trust other people, you're sad, you're heartbroken, you're confused, you're pissed off, you're angry. Samtosha is the line because life happens to us. Great things, sad things, and that is life. We all know this. There's COVID. Oh, numbers are dropping. Oh, COVID's coming back. (laughs) We just had a hurricane. It's like, oh, the surf is wonderful. It's giving us good waves. And then holy smokes, there are tree limbs and roof lines coming off and people's houses are getting hurt. It's these high points that we're having so much fun. It's a great life. And then we have these low, low points. Samtosha is your baseline of worthiness, your baseline of contentment, whether life is way up and you're stoked or you're heartbroken. Here's another example if you can't relate to those two. Have you ever been on a vacation <laughs> and it's the just the best vacation ever. It's just so nice. It's exactly what you need. And you just feel this sense of just joy. It's awesome. Life is so good. And then you come back and you're kind of blue. You got to go back to that four letter word that rhymes with irk. And you're feeling kind of down and you're kind of bummed out and you want to go back on vacation. (laughs) That's another example of that peak and that valley and your Samtosha, your baseline is in the middle. Where is your baseline there? So Samtosha requires a shift of mindset from seeking contentment within, inside of you, rather than seeking contentment from these external events. So all the things I've been telling you, breakups, vacations, hurricanes, those are all external events. So your Samtosha is like, okay, I need to seek my contentment, my joy within, because life is wild and unpredictable. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't experience peaks and valleys, highs and lows, being happy and joyous and sad. But Samtosha is like, hey, I'm here in the middle. Find out where your baseline is and then figure out where you are due to life events. So as long as we seek our happiness from the external, we may never be satisfied or happy. Such as using phrases, when this happens to me, I'll be happy. Next time I go on vacation, I'm going to be happy. I hear this a lot with Bonnaroo, the music festival. I'm just happy at Bonnaroo. (laughs) Bonnaroo is the best four days of my life. And then life sucks after that. (laughs) You will never find the sense of joyfulness and contentment if you're just basing that off of these wild external events that we have zero control over. And this is so beautiful to say and so hard to do. (laughs) So hard to do. Here's a way to look at it. We learn to experience all situations, all situations as a way to learn and grow. Then there becomes no such thing as good or bad experiences. They will simply be experiences that you grew from. Cute, right? (laughs) But for real, this is how I've gotten myself out of some tough times. What can I learn? What can I learn? How can I grow? What can I learn? How can I grow? This hurts. My heart's broken. Or my bank account is a little bit low. Or I'm feeling blue because of X, Y, and Z. I'm feeling anxious because of X, Y, and Z. What can I learn? How can I grow? That is trying to find maybe a silver lining if you want to call it, but it's a way to reframe your experience to how can I grow from this? How can I not repeat this? Here's one that we've all learned with COVID-19. We can be content with being discontent. As Jillian Michaels, the hardest personal trainer in the world, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. COVID-19 has been pretty uncomfortable for most of us. There's been good and some not so good that comes from it. But for the most part, it's pretty uncomfortable. Can't even go to a grocery store without that nervous system kicking in and being like, oh, oh." (laughs) Sam Tosha is saying, hey, life's going to get really uncomfortable. And you're going to experience these awesome things in life. And then you're going to experience some really lows in life, unless you're living under a rock. (laughs) Samtosha says, what can I, how can I learn? How can I grow? Where is my baseline? Where is my center? Where is my center? Can we acknowledge that I'm in a low, that I'm in a valley? Can I acknowledge I'm in a peak right now? And when you are in a peak, maybe not grasping 
and practicing that aparigraha, not hoarding on to that, such as, you know, when something really good happens to you and you're like, I wonder how long this is going to last. Or you feel like the sense of like, do I deserve this? <laughs> instead of just enjoying the moment, instead of just enjoying the love that you're experiencing for a person or a vacation or a place or experience, you're like, how long is this going to last? When's the other shoe going to drop? Am I worthy of this experience? This is some deep stuff, Sam Tosha. So step into that worthiness. You are enough. You are worthy of good experiences. And when shit hits the fan, which it does, what, how can you learn? How can you grow? A way that you can do that is by practicing gratitude for the good moments right now instead of wondering how long it's going to last. Practicing gratitude and saying, oh, I'm worthy of this experience, this good experience. And then once you're in that valley, how can I grow? How can I learn? I know I'm being redundant, but redundancy is how I learn. So maybe it's how you learn too. And then how do you experience and how do you navigate those peaks and those valleys? And are you basing a lot of your joyfulness, your worthiness, your enoughness on external events? So this is just something that our yoga practice is perhaps asking us to look at. The yamas and niyamas asks you, how am I living? How am I living on and off the mat? So a way that I like to practice samtosha on my mat is when I roll it out. It's kind of silly, but whatever. I'll just be like, thank you, Matt. <laughs> my mat is awesome. I love the color. I like this brand. And that's like a simple way to practice samtosha on the mat. And then maybe if you do that enough, you'll be finding yourself in this beautiful vista. Maybe you're watching a sunset and you're like, wow, this is so beautiful. Instead of wondering, I wonder how long this is going to last. Sam Tosha, contentment. Where is your baseline? You all, I hope you practice that compassion with your thoughts. That Sam Tosha. What are you grateful for? Instead of, are, am I worthy of this? Practice compassion with your speech. Sometimes I'll say, I am so grateful for my bed to my wife. <laughs> so grateful for my bed. It's so soft. And then practice that compassion with your actions. Shalom, Pure Vida. I'll talk to you soon. Well, since you're still here, if you want some more free resources, you can go to laurasiljandra.com or you can go to my YouTube channel, The Modern Yogi. I've got meditations on there. I've got some beginners flows on there. My podcasts are actually on there too, but I'm sure you're listening on Spotify or somewhere else. But check that out if you'd like. And I do have one more spot open on my mental health coaching. So if you're interested in that, you need a little bit of love, need a little bit of help and guidance from a mental health and yogic perspective, that's how I bridge it. So if you want some more information, you can DM me on Instagram or you can go to my website at the bottom of every page. It's get in contact with me. All right. Talk to you soon. Meow.